Gamers, welcome to another video. Uh, Pro Tour 3 happened this past weekend for Battle Spirit Saga and Fabled Beasts 1. And I just wanted to talk about why. Why, why did they win? And you know what? I'll also show you the deck list that I played and talk about some reasons for some of my card choices there as well. I got 21st, so I got $750, and I'll get two sets of the Pro Tour X-Rares, which is pretty cool. Very excited. This is, uh, I think, more than... I can't remember what I placed in Pro Tour 1. I didn't play in 2, but in Pro Tour 1, I think I was like 40 something 42 maybe and uh so it was cool i did better played a, lo a lot of uh really strong opponents played against ryan matas in round one and uh, we'll talk about all this but first let's let's get to the main topic which is why did fabled beasts win and what's really cool is if you check out the Nexus Podcasts, one of their most recent videos, they got to do a little interview with the True Duelists and talk about the deck that the five of them brought to the Pro Tour and their reasonings why. And a lot of it makes sense. Uh, there's, uh, they all do a great job explaining uh, the choices, but... For me, I got to also play against it in round one against Ryan, and I learned a lot of lessons in that game too. So first of all, with the deck that I played, I built my deck just with the idea of I'm going to dodge Fabled Beasts and that Fabled Beasts aren't going to show up that much. But oopsie, that was the wrong call. So... Uh, I didn't play. I didn't. I. I don't get to play test very much. There's uh, not as many Battle Spirit Saga gamers around me, and uh, not a lot of time for any of us to play test very much. So while t the True Duelists got to play over 500 games with Fabled Beasts, um, in the past two or three weeks, I played zero games uh, with or against Fabled Beasts. Uh, a few weeks ago, I played. A luster slash fabled beasts list against cosmic on his, it's on his channel um, and I also played that at locals and super fun super it felt super strong super fun um, I probably should have just played that list but like uh, put it to four gamboos and I probably would have done uh, really insane this weekend but that's okay I still went five and two which is great and let's talk about this list okay so the, one of the first things you're going to notice is two Beldegors in here. They mentioned that this was for a hedge against the red matchup so that they can kill their Dino Man and possibly even, you know, Eagles, whatever they end up exhausting that's, you know, not Apollo Dinos or Andromeda or, you know, a Dragno King or Nova or whatever. Beldegor is going to take care of it, which is really neat. And they also mentioned Arcana Knight Hex is basically a Nexus. That's what they treat it as. Uh, he's a one-cost Nexus sometimes that you just put on the board, and then you just try to attack in with your blessed guys, and then you draw a card. So then you basically have 12 Nexuses that can draw you cards, which is pretty insane. And also you can attack with this one. So <laughs> uh, super strong. Now... They also put Flagellum in their main deck, which I completely understand. Like I said, I've played some uh, Fabled Beasts with Flagellum in the main. Judgment Angel, Flagellum is crazy. Uh, Alex Blinden mentioned in the interview that he thinks that maybe this, this card might have been a mistake. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's intense. Uh, you can't flood stream it. You basically have to Dream Bomb it. There's nothing else. You could Turbo Rex it, I guess. But that's Turbo Rex isn't solving the adding the stuff back to your hand with Luster. So it's basically you have Dream Bomb to bounce it back, or you probably lose the game. Uh, or if you have Dragno King, I guess, and they decide to not put it to four cores, then maybe you're going to be able to kill it. Or Nova, I guess. That's it. So super insane card. That's another reason why. Now, th there's two other really strong reasons why... Uh, I mean, and we'll talk about the, the side deck here in a minute too, but the other reasons are four Thorn Prisons. Thorn Prison is such a crazy card, but 
When you have blessed spirits in your deck, Thorn Prison is even crazier. And then also, I mean, we all know 10 Millennia Turtle Gembu gives your Fabled Beasts unblockable against effect uh, spirits, but the level 2 effect of when one of your Fabled Beasts dies, uh, you can just choose one of your exhausted Fabled Beasts and refresh them. This was the part, this was the, I, I knew this effect existed, right? But this is the part that I, I made a mistake against Ryan in round one that made me realize, holy crap, yeah, I'm actually going to just die to this deck every time. Because what they end up doing, and I literally, I watched Ryan do this to me, I watched Zach do this on stream to people, is you eventually set it up so that you have either your dual eagle or your other blessed spirits. You've got... Gembu on the board, and then you put Carbuckle. Just Gem Beast Carbuckle on the board, or just any other Fabled Beast doesn't matter. And you attack, you you may get Gembu makes the blessed spirit unblockable. You take the damage. You're very sad about it. And then after that, they just attack with Gem Beast. And you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. Look, weak, weak little fabled beast, I guess I'll block. No. No, not, then you lose the game because the, the Fabled Beast dies and then they just refresh the unblockable spirit that's blessed. So you take another damage and then they now they're at seven life. <laughs> and, it, and the game is like incredibly over at that point. Like it's so over, it's insane. So the, the other thing is, let's talk about my deck for a second, okay? I was playing what I, what I called Cursed Dragon Rainbow Ramp because I actually have all six colors in the main deck, right? We got a side deck over here as well. But um, I got two Hippocampo in here and two Floodstream in the main, right? So when they're playing against you, they're not going to put two Gembus on the board. And they're always going to have more than one core on Gembu. So basically, I have to Curse Dragon combo individual Gembus. So I have to like use two card combo to kill their Gembu. And every turn that I don't do that, it, I'm getting further away from winning. It's crazy. And then like Forest Guardian uh, Alron is insane. She's so good. But as you can see from their list, they are main decking three Floodstream, which, you know, I, that Ryan Floodstreamed, uh, I'm pretty sure multiple of my Forest Guardians. And uh, it's, it's a rough life. And so, yeah, it's, it's the, especially for the, the Smag decks, Curse Dragon combo, it's, uh, it's too hard to, to stop the Gembu. Um, I could have, I could have put in a Vanilla Spirit in here, but like I said, I, I made changes to this deck just pretending that I wasn't going to play against Fabled Beasts. And I reasoned with myself that, um, Hippocampo will be better for me than a, something to block their guy because I'll just heal back myself when I hit them with my hippocampo I'll thorn prison them um I'll I'll hippocampo them and I'll get my life back but it's it's too it's too hard it's too crazy um yeah Gembu's second effect just is so hard because once they attack with the unblockable and then they attack with any, attack with any other fabled beast, like you just can't block it, or you like you activate a block and then you use a spell in your hand to kill your own spirit so that it doesn't kill their fabled beast, so they they don't refresh their unblockable blessed spirit. So it's 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 crazy, and yeah, like I mentioned before, the four thorn prison also is insane because most of the time, like people aren't gonna build boards bigger than three. In this current meta, it's just harder. Like, red is playing mid-range for the most part. And then they also mentioned the combo of, like, four Thorn Prison, four Exhaust Nexus. If they want to play more than three Spirits on the board, you might be able to just literally kill them with Flagellum and Exhaust Nexus. Just kill their board. Or if they only do three, then they can't attack you, because if they attack you, you're going to Thorn Prison them, and then you're going to attack in with a Blessed Spirit that's going to draw you a card and heal you <laughs> and get your opponent closer to dying. So it's super crazy right now. Another thing that the True Duelists mentioned is that um, Dual Eagle is probably ultimately the most problematic card in, in the whole deck because it's the biggest Blessed Spirit, 
you can play it for just two. And also at level three, even level one spirits can't block your your blessed spirits. So a lot of the time, like the the crappy vanilla spirits that people are putting in their decks to try to hedge against Gembu's effect, they're gonna have to also be at level two to block dual eagle. So you have to put legitimately a a just a bad card. You have to put bad cards in your deck. And then you all those bad cards, you have to put more cores on those bad cards so that they can block a dual eagle. And then they also have to have like more than 7,000 stats because your opponent will just put the level 2 Phantasmal Paradise effect to bump their Fabled Beasts up by 1,000. So then dual eagle is at 7,000. So if you want to be able to block another attack someday, it has to be more than 7,000. And then you also just have to assume that they're not going to just exhaust Nexus, your spirits, and then just get over them anyways. It's pretty insane. I really, I don't know. I don't know what the solution <laughs> to this deck is going to be. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't even know if, if red is exactly good enough. Because it's, what's crazy is they, they mention it's, it's the most high, like it's high roll is the highest high roll. And, and I can see it because even if you're playing red and you're playing Nova, like, and you'd have to basically play Nova to really try to kill this deck, in their top eight matches, they still beat their Nova and their red opponents, which is so crazy because they just still high rolled them. Like, they probably weren't supposed to win that deck. I know that uh, I, heard, I heard that they mentioned that, like, all of the Nexus removal of one of the red decks was in like the bottom like 15, 20 cards of their deck. So they just literally couldn't kill any of the Nexuses and they're just drawing cards every turn, which is insane. Obviously, that's not going to happen every time. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you just now, I think the aggro's probably dead for worlds. I mean, I know that, uh, I know that two white aggros got into top 16, but I think... I mean, it's not going to be dead because, right, it's not like every single person is going to watch this video or every single player is even, you know, watching the, the other interviews or, or anything else to understand why certain decks are playing certain cards and what the best thing to fight those things are. But, like, Floodstream is really just so important to kill Dual Eagle right now, I feel like. It's just, like, it's actually just insane. You actually just need... Dual Eagle. You need this to kill Dual Eagle. And uh, because of that, I think the, the best, the, the decks that are going to be in the top of Worlds, I think are going to have like at, like at least three Floodstream main deck. As you saw, like they, they had three Floodstream in their main deck. It kills All Run, it kills Dual Eagle, and it threatens anybody who's willing to put two cost or fewer spirits on their board because then you get the multi-kill with it which is like all of what aggro is trying to do as well it's uh it's it's pretty important right now so i, I man if fabled beasts are gonna not win worlds it's gonna probably be because somebody makes a deck that's probably a red deck because you you need to be able to kill the nexuses on site and then you're gonna also need flood streams to kill dual eagles on site and also you're going to need to be able to kill gembus and you're going to need to be able to kill flood gems, which is probably nova i guess um i also had the thought of like we red might be at a point where they might actually have to play scorched battlefield Again, and just understand that like your Apollo Dinos is not going to kill 5Ks and be okay with that because I think that the more important thing is for Apollo Dinos to be able to get up to 10K easier. And I know that people have been playing charge draws in there too, and they probably should and they probably will need to so they can try to kill uh, Gembus. But uh, I think it's going to be really important for Apollo Dinos to be able to get up to... 10,000 easier to be able to just kill Gembus on site as well. So basically, if Fabled Beast puts a Gembu and a Dual Eagle on the board, they attack with the Dual Eagle, you floodstream it, 
And then the next turn, your Apollo Dinos can just kill the Gembu. And try to just rely on that. Like, also, obviously, you have the Nova route. You can uh, try to put some Novas in there. But, you know, Nova has his downsides of needing to ascend and, and being pretty expensive, too. But, I, I, I mean, I think those are the options. Whew. Um, you also, uh, I guess we might as well mention, they sighted into Luster, and they also uh, sighted uh, Rayut to be able to stop their flagellums from getting <laughs> dream-bombed. So, yeah, it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. <laughs> they also have the Star Bliss draws for the, the Wind Summon Ramp smag decks, such as my own. You know, any other, like, I guess if... Like it's it's really good against a lot of things. Like even white control is playing like four mammoth Aegis now too. I mean it's that's not the worst thing. Um, so I mean yeah, it's uh it's a little, if we want to recap here on this this long let's say sixteen minute and ten second video. If you if you made it here, leave a comment sixteen ten so that I know that you are an insane content viewer. You're just you're a legend. Okay. The recap of why Fable Beasts were so insane this past weekend and, and are going to be a challenge and the things that you have to figure out how to solve if you want to beat them or if you want to play with them and in a mirror possibly is they have the Beldegore for a hedge against red. They have Gembu's second effect so that you have to somehow block their second Fable Beast attack but not kill it. They have the four thorn prisons, so if you attack with three spirits, then they're going to put them down, and then they're just going to bless up next round, or next turn. And if you go four wide, they're going to ex exhaust Nexus you. If you're going to try to play a strong red spirit, green spirit, that's five costs, such as Apollo Dinos, Alron, or even just in the mirror match, Dual Eagle, Floodstream's going to take care of it there. These are, these are the reasons, and Flagellum also obviously going to combo and board wipe you sometimes as well. It's, it's, so, it's got basically everything. It has Unblockable, it has Insane Card Draw, it has Bless, it's got even potential Recursion with Beldegore, as Beldegore loops with 12 Spirits, and it has Insane Removal and Defense. It's... <laughs> What are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, there we go. That's the recap. Um, I guess if I want to talk about my deck for a second longer, I just uh, I went to 51 because I kind of just wanted two of each of kind of the best uh, spells in the in the game. Burning Force, Thorn Prison, Dream Bomb, Floodstream. I wanted like just a variety. Uh, I also decided to, instead of playing four elephant, I went for one enterprise, and what's hilarious is I played enterprise so many times uh, at the Pro Tour. It was crazy. Uh, you know, I know most people uh, tell you to try to avoid putting one ofs in your deck, and it totally makes sense. If, if, the, if the spirit is key, or if the, if the card is key to your strategy, I mean, yeah, you probably don't want just one in your deck, but... If you have zero of it of a card in your deck, then you can't draw it, right? You just can't draw the card if you have zero. And so I put Enterprise in here because I was like, you know what? I probably won't ever be mad to draw Enterprise, but I would definitely hate having two Enterprise. And I just thought it would be nice, you know, against red. They they can't board clear me, um. They uh the the Nomen guard won't get dream bombed. Um, I also had severe worry about counter sword because uh when I watched uh one of Cosmic's uh stream matches at Atlanta, it like crushed my soul when he he saw I think he summoned a Beldegor and then they counter sorted his nomen guard to the top of his deck and i was like holy crap that is the suckiest thing that sucks so bad so um and obviously also i played counter sword uh because of 
because of reasons like that too. I thought I thought that I'd maybe play against some smagmirs. I only played against one smagmir, I think. Kind I mean there was a person there's a person Anton who played like a control deck to beat control decks. Like it it was basically like white control that had curse dragon combo and impaler forest in it and it was so grindy. Like I was able to win it 2-0, but it literally took till like two minutes before time to finish those two games. It was so insane. Harpy Nest Palace was also for the mirror. Or anybody who wants to curse dragon combo. Uh more flood streams because afraid of aggro and also to kill dual eagles. Dream bombs for flagellums and you know, some white cards. And Derm Dyna in case you know I play against white control and I need some unblockables to get through some stuff. Even though Curse Dragon Combo is really good. Curse Dragon Combo can eat through their board, kill the the elks and all that. Um, sometimes you just need to attack her game. Ooh. And that's about it. Not too much to say here. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, also, just uh, some shout outs to some people. I got to, I got to, I met somebody named Kyle. They're super cool. Met Stevie. He was cool. Got to meet Emiliano. Uh, he was awesome. Got to chat a bunch. Super friendly people at the Pro Tour. I appreciate all of you. Anybody who came and said hi, uh, you're awesome. It, it also, if you, if you want to chat, make sure you add me on Discord. It's, it's just Travi Dead. Um, we can chat on Discord if you would like. Whew. What else? Man, it was a good time. Yeah, had lots of fun. So, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about Fabled Beasts? Huh? Are we going to, are we going to, are we going to join them? Are we uh, going to have just pure Fabled Beast mirrors at Worlds and just have all of us cry because we're going to have to pass a million turns because we are afraid of getting Thorn Prison and then blessed? Or are we all going to play 12 Nexus removal and just brick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Uh, we're, we're actually done. The video's actually done. Okay. 